Hey guys, I'm Joe and welcome back to another video. I've been wanting to get my hands on a laptop with the Intel Iris Xe graphics to see how it compares with the Budget King, the Ryzen 5. We finally have one in the cave. Yeah, that's what I'm calling my home office slash studio. Awesome name, I know. If you're new here, welcome to the next episode of Benchmark, where I find budget computers either used or new and see how capable they are playing modern games. My last laptop featured was a factory refurbished Lenovo Flex 5 with an Intel i3 1005G1 and integrated Intel UHD graphics. If you missed that one, you can check it out on my channel, links will be in the description below. Today I'm featuring a factory refurbished Dell Vostro 3400 with an Intel Core i5 1135G7 and integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics. We'll be doing a teardown to see what's happening on the inside, followed by gaming benchmarks. As usual, you can find timestamps below if you want to go directly to a particular section. By the way, if you're interested in this sort of thing, consider pressing that subscribe button. And stay glued to this channel for loads of upcoming videos I have in the pipeline. That's enough yapping, let's get to the nitty gritty. I picked up this laptop factory refurbished on eBay for $450, which puts it right in the price range of the Ryzen 5 laptops, so it's got a big target on its back. For port selections, on the right side it has a Kensington lock, a USB 2.0 Type-A port and a full-size SD card reader. On the left side it has a power port, there's a HDMI 1.4 port, a gigabit ethernet port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports and a combined audio jack. On the inside we have a 4-core Intel Core i5 1135G7 with a max turbo frequency of 4.2 GHz an integrated Intel Iris Xe G7 graphics with a max frequency of 1.3 GHz. This uses up to half of your system RAM for VRAM, a total of 8 GB DDR4 RAM at 2,666 MHz, a 256 GB M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, a 14-inch 1080p FHD WVA display, 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5, a chiclet-style keyboard without numpad, and Windows 10 Pro, where I'm running version 20H2 and the Intel graphics are running the driver version 27.20.100.9466. To open this laptop, we just need to pull the 9 screws holding on the back cover. Then use a plastic pry tool to loosen the clips holding it in place. We can now see a majority of the components that are important to us after removing this back panel. We bought this one factory refurbish and it's in pristine condition on the inside and out, so no cleanup was necessary. Looking at the components, we have a 256GB PCIe NVMe SSD with a space for a regular 2.5 inch SATA drive that includes the caddy and the connector. For the memory configuration, there are two memory slots, with one of them being occupied by 8GB of 3200MHz DDR4 RAM. This means the RAM will be running in single channel mode, but we have the option to add another stick and run it in dual channel mode. Look out for my upcoming video where I'll be comparing the single versus dual channel on this laptop. I have to really give Dell props for the upgradability of this laptop. It's rare to see space for a 2.5 inch SATA drive and two memory slots at this price point. Lastly, it has a 3 cell 42 watt hour lithium ion battery. We are now done with the teardown, so let's close it up and do some gaming. Tomb Raider was running at 1280 by 720 on the lowest setting, but we had some frame dropping issues. Bravo hasn't run into any more resistance along the way, but find the native. We need to get some answers. Dirt 4 ran smooth at 900p low settings, and we are getting an average frame rate of 39 fps. 100 through dip. Keep right over crest. Keep left over crest. 100 through dip. Keep middle over crest. Star Wars Fallen Auto was running at 720p medium settings and we had frame dropping issues. Right. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
If a 21 was at 720p medium settings with anti-aliasing set at 2x and it was running at an average frame rate of 50 fps. Gives it a go! And that's easy peasy for the keeper. Overwatch was set to 1080p low settings and we are getting an average frame rate of 33 fps. PUBG was set to 900p very low settings with the view distance set to far and we are getting an average frame rate of about 40 fps. Fortnite was set to 900p low settings, we are on performance mode and we are getting an average FPS of around 70. NBA 2K21 was at 768p low settings and we're getting an average FPS of around 62 but I'd recommend setting this to V-Sync because we had a few frame dropping issues without. Next up we have Rocket League running at 768p high quality and we're getting an average frame rate of 30. Grand Theft Auto was running at 900p normal settings and the average frame rate was around 30 fps. And lastly we have Apex Legends running at 720p low settings. For this one it was a bit unplayable for me because once you dropped into the map it took around, I don't know, maybe a minute to two for the frame rates to stabilize. The Dell Vostra 3400 with the Intel i5 1135G7 definitely didn't live up to the performance of the Ryzen 5 4500U, but it wouldn't be a fair comparison as it was running in single channel mode. It runs AAA games at 720-900p at around 30 frames per second with low to medium settings and it runs lesser demanding titles at 900-1080p at 30 frames per second and over at medium settings. I'll reserve judgement until I can retest it with your channel memory. But even so, I was really impressed with its upgradability, having the option to add a 2.5 inch SATA drive and additional memory using the second memory slot. Dell gets a thumbs up for keeping up these features that should be standard, but unfortunately I am seeing less of this nowadays. And with that, this has been another episode of Benchmarked. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Leave a comment telling me what you thought of this video. If you have a different opinion, let me know. Subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of my next video. I'm Joe. See you in the next one.